Hello everyone, I'm MST1 Nick Adams with the Trace in Yorktown Marine Environmental Response School. In this video, I'll be discussing the contents of an oil sampling kit. Page 4 of the MSL Sample Handling and Transmittal Guide contains a comprehensive list of items to assemble a basic sampling kit. Let's start by examining those items, then I'll highlight a few additional pieces of equipment that will make your sampling kit more effective. The first item that MSL recommends is a sampling kit carrier or cooler. The carrier can be any style, though backpack and duffel are probably the most common. The most important thing is that it is large enough to hold your sampling gear while still being easily portable. I would advise having a separate dedicated cooler as some of the items in your kit could be compromised by the moisture generated from melting ice or cold packs used to keep the samples cold. Your sampling kit should contain at least 16 4 ounce glass sample jars with Teflon lined lids. This should be the bare minimum of sample jars in your kit. Make sure to bring extra in cases where you think more sample jars may be needed. Jar rings are used for securing sample jars to your sample pole. 16 is the suggested number of jar rings to include in your kit. I wouldn't recommend carrying any more because cotton twine is both a more versatile and cost-effective way to obtain oil samples in hard-to-reach areas. The next items are sheen nets and Teflon pads. MSL recommends including five sheen nets and ten Teflon pads in your sample kit. The sheen nets are expensive, so use them only when necessary to collect a viable oil sample. The Teflon pads are used to collect swipe samples and are preferred by MSL to the old school method of using a clean section of sorbent pad to collect samples from areas such as the inside of pipes and hoses. One word of caution I'll add regarding jar rings, sheen nets, and Teflon pads. Make sure these items are maintained in their original packaging prior to use. This will greatly reduce the chances of contamination which could impact the sample analysis. While the MSL guide recommends one box of natural gloves, it is important that those gloves fit the person taking the samples. Gloves that are too small or too large could prove to be ineffective as PPE. Also, avoid using latex gloves when taking oil samples. In addition to being an allergen to some people, latex gloves break down when exposed to petroleum products. As mentioned previously, cotton twine is useful in obtaining samples of oil in hard to reach areas. When selecting your twine, avoid products that are waxed or tarred as they contain compounds that may contaminate your samples. Having at least one roll of electrical tape in your sample kit will enable you to seal jars to prevent leaks. Carrying a sample pole in your kit may be impractical due to its size. To make sure it is readily available, either attach it to the exterior of your sampling kit or keep a sampling pole in each of your unit's response vehicles. MSL recommends including at least eight cardboard mailing tubes in your sample kit. As with sample jars, this should be the bare minimum. A best practice is to have one mailing tube for every two jars you're carrying. Mailing tubes not only protect the jars, but provide containment in case one of your samples should leak. The sample handling and transmittal guide suggests carrying adhesive labels for your jars, but it doesn't specify a number. At least one label per jar is a good number, Though I would caution against applying the labels until you have obtained an evidence control number. It is much easier to write this information on the labels prior to placing them on the jars. Sorbent material, specifically pads, will aid in cleaning residual oil from your sample jars. Wipe down the jars prior to applying any tape or labels, as oil could reduce the effectiveness of the adhesive material. I recommended keeping one half sorbent pad for every sample jar in your kit along with a few extras in the response vehicle. Cutting the pads in half maximizes portability and minimizes waste. A Sharpie or other waterproof marker is useful for recording important sample information on the lid of the jar or on the mailing tube. I would recommend keeping at least two in your sample kit. The last item of sampling kit equipment specifically recommended by MSL is tamper-proof evidence tape. This should be placed over the jar after wiping and sealing. Apply evidence tape in any instance where the sample may be used in criminal proceedings, such as a magic pipe case or intentional discharge. 
Some items not specifically recommended by MSL, which are excellent additions to your sample kit, are tongue depressors and a knife or scissors. The tongue depressors are useful for scooping heavy weathered oils, such as tar balls, into your sample jar. If you use tongue depressors, make sure they are the sterile, individually wrapped variety and that they remain in their original packaging until use. The knife or scissors will come in handy for cutting the electrical tape or cotton twine used when collecting samples. Be sure to restock your kit after each use and conduct periodic inspections to ensure that the carrier and the contents remain in serviceable condition.